So we now have our first meditation. So the first meditation be revealing to us about our life. The journey of Jesus Christ with the people, that event of the Jesus way to Calvary. And all those events very revealing actually of our life as well. How we behave, how we act, how we deal with people. And so, the first point to meditate with you is the very first station. We say, Pilots condemn Jesus to death. Condemn Jesus to death. And all other people actually also condemn Jesus to death. So, in this event and in this act, capture the moment. Be there. Do you think you and I would we have would we have acted differently? Ask yourself that question. Well, yeah, we will say yes. We will act differently. What comes to mind, therefore, two things: making judgment on a person or persons or people and making decisions. Isn't it your life, my life? Every moment of our life, we make judgments and we make decisions. How do we do that? Do we make judgments and do we make decisions that will honor and please God or condemn God, condemn Jesus? Do we make judgments and decisions to bring us closer to God or away from God. So, in Pilate, we go first to Pilate. Pilate made the decision to condemn Jesus. Pilate made the judgment and going to judge that he is guilty. Even if he knew he is innocent, but he condemned him, so he is guilty. So, in your life and in my life, isn't it we judge people and yet we are told by our faith not to judge? How actually is judging others? The judgment is directed to the person. Remember always, there is the person, there is the action. And they are different. The person and the action. The person may do good act. We say that person is good. Right? That's a judgment. Now, the person did a bad act. Now we say bad person. That's a judgment. Because that's always that's directed to the person. Now we are told not to judge. But we make judgment. And that is why many times we commit wrong judgments. Because especially, especially when some actions, bad actions are done, we right away say, oh, that person is bad. We right away associate something that this one is bad. Even also with good. Okay, there is a good act. And then we right away say, very good person. But we know, we do not know actually if the person is really good. It is good when it is good. With both the action and the person really good. But the connection between the action and the person is not necessarily connected. If somebody did a good act, not necessarily that the person is truly good. But doing the good act, yes, can be a good person. But is he really totally good? That's always another question, right? Now, doing the bad act. The bad act, and then we say right away, the person is bad. It does, does it necessarily connect? No. Because the person might not might committed mistake and committed sin, but doesn't necessarily mean the person totally bad. Even if a criminal, a criminal, that's why they are put into jail and given time to reflect. And hopefully, will will change. And that's why, let us go to 
the making judgment, especially the bad judgment. We make bad judgment because we would like to exalt ourselves by saying the other is bad. Unconsciously, we do that because we want to exalt ourselves by putting down others. I am better. Thanks be to God, I am better than you. And, and there are many other subtle ways that we can, you know, um, have those kind of judgments. So, what do we do? We always have to think, when somebody, yes, have done bad, we say the action was bad. And that action, he must be responsible. But the person, we do not judge as bad as bad. But we, that is why we pray for conversion. That's why there is prayer of conversion. Pray that he be converted. Pray that the person may realize there is God in our life. Do you want that people will judge you? You have done something bad. Do you want that people also will see you as bad? Because you yourself, I believe, will say, well, I have done bad things, but I believe I am not really bad. Right? And that is why during this Lenten season, ask the Lord forgiveness. For the many times we make judgments, wrong judgments, bad judgments. When we can do that, then we renew our mindset to always love others. We love the sinner but hate the sin. God loves the sinner but condemns the sin. God condemns what the sin is and save and redeem the sinner. That is and supposed to be our attitude. Now, making decisions. Pilate made a bad decision. And this is also revealing also in our life. We make bad decisions. What are the ways we make the bad decisions? The first thing is that we have to know decisions are connected to the person. With whatever decision we make, we become what we have decided on. We decide to do good, we become good. We decide to do bad, we become a sinner. If we decide to commit sin from not being a sinner, we become a sinner. So the decision make, makes us what we decided. Therefore, there is the connection between the decision and the person who decided. Do you think of that? If we are making good actions, therefore, we have been making good decisions. And the, the more we make good decisions, the more we make good actions, we are growing in the good. If therefore we are making bad decisions, and therefore doing bad actions, and multiplying them, then we are worsening our, our state of life. Now, as Pilate made the decision, bad decision. Look what happened. Even until now, we mention him. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. Every time we, every time we make, we make a tree. You see, whatever he has done is now associated to him. The idea here is this. He made a bad decision. And we too make or make bad decisions. Three things. Uh, why we make bad decisions, like Pilate. First, Pilate made a bad decision because of political interest, honor, power, because of social status. 
You know, when the people already told him, if you will not condemn him, you are not, not a friend of Caesar. You are playing like Caesar. He become, become frightened now. Because now it is an attack to his social status. Many times we make bad decisions because, oh, oh this is an attack to my social status. This is an attack to my honor. We have to know true honor is only in the truth. True honor is only in the good. True honor is only in righteousness. True honor is only with God. And many times we forget that. See in your life, when did you have a bad decision that it was to protect to protect your own interests and your own social status and your own honor of power. Another thing we decide we make bad decisions is because of our we have our own interests, we have our own designs, we have our we 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 have what is important to us and whatever matters to us, whatever is important to us then that must be protected, that must be safeguarded, which is not bad, actually. But many times, those interests, those that matter to us, are not actually what matter to God, what is important. And so when we make bad decisions, it's because we compromise, compromise what is good, and have done, and choose what is bad. Because it is for the benefit of what of what is important for me. Third thing, we make bad decisions because it is against our lifestyle. We have our own behavior, we have our own lifestyle. And of course, on the, I believe with that a pilot, uh, being the prefect, a Roman prefect or the governor, he enjoys the luxury and his social status. So, there is a lifestyle that he has to maintain. You and I, we also have some lifestyle that we have to maintain. Even when it comes to moral obligations, many times our moral obligations are put aside. And then we decide to do something else. The second thing I would like us to, to meditate and reflect in this journey towards Calvary, three stations. There are three stations I would like to cite. Jesus meets, oh, Jesus meets the Blessed Mother Mary. Jesus encountered Veronica, and Veronica wiped his face. And also, Jesus meets the women at Jerusalem. Stations number four, number six, and number eight. What are these in our life? This speaks to human relationships. And the human relationship that we have fundamentally, family and friends. Uh, family. We are born into a family and we also grow up with a family. And then we have our friends. Our friends from work and friends also as we go up. Now, also very revealing with this journey to Calvary. You see, the family, with the family of Jesus, the mother, what did Mother Mary do to the Lord? They encountered each other, and they consoled each other. They encouraged each other. It's an uplifting moment for each other. We have our families. You have your families. Do you always lift each other up? Or you pull, you pull down each other? Do you console each other? Or you quarrel most often? Do you give encouragement and affirmation? More of that rather than criticism. And putting down each other. Many times, siblings in a family, 20 years, siblings 
has not even called each other. 20 years, many years. Why? Because there was something in their past that they could not resolve. And because of their ego, they just said, you have your way, I have my way. Like that. How is your family? Now, friends, friends, friends at work, friends that we know for life. Now, we go Veronica. Veronica White, the face of Jesus. In our friendships, do we try to console each other? Or many times, when we are hurt, when we are hurt, we say goodbye, goodbye. I don't know girl who don't want to talk to you. What if you are supposed to be Veronica? Whenever we commit sin, we wound each other. We hurt. We hurt not only the person we hurt, but we hurt ourselves as well. The more we do that, the more bruises and scars and wounds we have. Now, when a, when a friend would go to you talking about another friend, what do you do? Maybe you would put on more the gossip. You know I have heard of this friend of ours and he's like this and like that and like this. And then now you will say, instead of saying, you know, um, be calm, be calm. Let us try to just put things right now. What do we do usually? Oh yes, you know, there was also one time I was also like that, I was hurt. Or maybe we were not also hurt. Maybe we would just say, oh yes, may, I heard also of some other people, he is like this, he's like that. You see, we put fire with fire. Yes. We are not like Veronica, wiping the face. Yes, these are our friends who would go to us to tell, uh, to tell us of their maybe uh, hurts. We have to be there, yes, to console like Veronica. But then at the same time, as we wipe the face of this friend, we must not destroy the other that we have been talking. At that moment, you are Veronica as well to wipe that face also. That he is not there. Maybe we have to say, yes. You see, you know that maybe our friend has done something wrong, but it doesn't mean that he is really that bad. The bad act, always bad. But the person, there is always something good in the person, even if that person has done, done something bad. The other point here is Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. Friends, do friends, our friends, can lead us to God? Or our friends can lead us away from God? The women meet Jesus. They would like to go to Jesus. Our friends, do our friends would like to go to Jesus? Or our friends would say, no, I am not going to, to go to church. You would like? Okay, you go, but you are no longer part of our inner circle. Remember there is a saying, tell me who your friends are, I will tell you who you are. So, select good friends. And remember, even in the Bible it says, if you find a good friend, you found a treasure. And a good friend will bring you to God. And that's a good treasure. If a friend will not bring you to God, that's not a good friend. And better that at that very moment that you know, there is a red flag, begin to make a good decision. However, many times we say, okay, well, my, my friends, as I've said, we cannot put down friends. So, we linger a little bit. So we say, maybe I can help my friend to see a new way about faith. So you linger a little bit. Now, you either become like them or you make them like you to go to God. But what happens many times? 
instead of making them like us to go to God, we become like them and then forget about God. And this is very revealing of what human relationships, our relationships, how are your relationships, your family, your friends. Remember, our relationships touch us actually morally and spiritually. And that is why we have to take care of our own soul, of our own lives. This is during, therefore during this Lenten season, remember always how to sanctify relationships, to sanctify your family, to sanctify your friends. During this time of, of Lenten season, maybe remind each other, hey, it is Lenten season. Are you planning to go to confession? Uh, are you going to church? Especially now members of families. Remind members of families. Are you, are you praying at home during this time? Oh, it's Friday. You are still healthy. Do not eat meat. Try to have abstinence. Do you remember that? Maybe not because you like hamburger and like me, I like hamburger. So I am not going to correct other people because I like hamburger. <laughs> and if we do that, we are not doing what we are supposed to do. We are not being good friends or we are not being a good member of the family that will sanctify the family. Because in the family, this is the mission. The husband has to make a saint out of his wife. The wife has to make a saint out of, his, of her husband. The parents has to make saints out of their children. And the husband and wife that are saints. Son, Saint Isidore the Parmen, his wife, Santa Maria de la Cabeza. Both saints. So, the third point I would like us to also... Because of the issue of the recording and the memory of the camera, the last point was cut off. And so for this last point about the sanctification of work, and this is the station wherein Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. Human work. Human work is a gift from God to us. Maybe we would think that maybe if humanity has not fallen into sin in paradise, maybe we will not work. No, work is integrally part of our human existence. So there will be work, but the sin affected human work. There, as is mentioned in the scriptures, there is a curse. Human work will be tiresome, will be hard. That even the soil uh, was cursed, that it will not give right. the produce that we expect. But sometimes it will be empty harvest. Or, so with human work, there accompanies with it the effects of sin. I will mention four. First is the disposition to work. The disposition to work, many times we are no longer willing to work because our disposition would be like that of a crab mentality that um, the other is a, is a threat to my progress. So not good. That comes from sin. So the second thing is envy. The envy creeps into work because with envy, uh, instead of having to compete with oneself, yesterday I, I worked this much. Today I will work harder. We have to compete with our own performance rather than in rivalry and competition, which sometimes is destructive with others can be destructive. So we have that kind and it is not good. The third is bad intention. By hook or by crook, 
is not good. So that kind of mentality is result of sin mm -hmm. and with our work. So with this mindset, therefore, uh, bad motives, bad intentions, um, we become deceptive or sometimes fraudulent in relation to work. And the last uh, element that affects uh, work that comes from sin is our personal interests, sometimes, sometimes what interests us or what our preferences are, are, they cross the boundaries of uh, upright practices of work. Therefore, what I want is what should be done, even if what I actually want would be crossing the lines of righteousness, of honesty, of integrity. So in order to sanctify work, I want us always to think, first and foremost, there is the presence of God. And when we do our work, we serve the Lord. Yes, we are employed in a company. Yes, we are employed by somebody. But we serve them because we love God. After all, in doing our work well, I progress myself. I develop myself. Thank you. There is God's presence. Second, in order, in order to sanctify work, work honestly, work with integrity, work with the sense of your faith. Third, work with excellence, work with professionalism. This means that we give always our best because we are instruments of God in the development and the progress of creation. We do what we do in our work, in our jobs, in order to help progress creation, in order to help progress humanity. And then lastly, we make, we can, we can sanctify our work when we bring our faith into our work, when we let our faith influence our work practices, and that's why we have the so-called work ethics. We, we bring the principles of our faith. We bring the Christian ethics and Christian morals into our work. And so we sanctify work. This is where ourselves encounter Christ. Like that station, Simon encounters Jesus. He helps Jesus carry the cross. We do the same. In every work we do, it is carrying the cross with Christ. And when we do that, we sanctify what we do. And we are sanctified as well in doing our work well.